All right, we're casting some silver today. Okay, as you guys can see, I'm using the electric furnace here. You can see the on off switch and all that. And you can also see the melting temperature right in there 1110 degrees Celsius. Doing it at 5 degrees higher than I normally do it just because I'm doing a higher piece. But yeah, I'm going to be showing you every step to pouring your own silver whatever it may be. And we're gonna do some sand casting today, so going over the entire process of sand casting, pouring your own sand casting pieces. So I'm gonna go over to the workspace as we wait for this to heat up. So right now, I am just using a strainer, as you guys can see here, getting the sand nice and fine into the flask. Yeah, it's a flask, what we have, what you call it down there that holds the sand. And yeah, I don't like to put too much sand in it at once, but I'm gonna put some more in. More Petro Bond, that's what I use. Now we pack it all down, nice and firm using a hammer. I like to hold the flask down as I pack the dirt, uh, all the sand down and everything just because you don't want it to be bouncing around or anything like that. And we can still use a bit more so I'm just going to brush that off to the side, it's not all the way to the top. I just throw this stuff back in. This here will be the piece that we're casting today. <clears throat> a nice Halloween piece as Halloween season's coming up pretty soon. All right, let's go for it. So take this piece here, stick it in the parting powder. And then, now I just kind of tap it. And we just want to set this nice and firmly into the sand without disturbing the sand too, too much. I'm 
much. Just gotta give it a little bit of a tap. Just like that. Now since it's nice and set, we can put the other side of the flask on. Or we gotta do one thing first. I like to put parting powder in first before I do anything. So I'm just gonna hold that still. And sometimes you just gotta poke out the sand from, from where the pins go, the pin holes. side of the flask on now. now since all those pinholes are clean Just like the last one, pack it down. That's gonna be the shape of what we pour. Nice and crisp, nice detail. So what I like to do though, is you wanna clear out space for the silver to flow in. You gotta remove the mold, just like that. Just falls right out. So it'll all come in right through there. You want to keep it nice and small so it's nice and neat when you separate it from the stem later on. And this is one key factor in it. That's right in the center. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side.
Make that a bit deeper. There we go. You want to pack that down just so the sand doesn't flow in and leave wrinkles or anything, any spots where sand flowed in. Now we quickly put a little vent holes. I like to put them all on the back just to make it nice and cleaner. I put it together. Give it a little shake out first, which is always nice in case there's any loose bits of sand. Put the two sides together. Now I like to look down right into the hole there. And it looks like we should make it a little bit thicker. But I like to keep it as thin as possible. Now we put it back together once more. Double check. Just on the top there. Just take a little peek and that looks good to me. So, now all we gotta do is wait for the kiln to heat up. And that is basically the entire process except for pouring it. Now since we have everything up to temperature, let's start the pouring. Obviously I want to clamp all the flask together. Nice smooth pour. Okay, now we just See how it turns out. Nice. That turned out really nice. Check that out. There we go. That's how it is for now. Let's start tapping some of the dirt off and see how it came looks with all the dirt clean. Okay, I'm just gonna let that cool down and quench it. Now it's time to cut off all the vent leads. I want to cut them as flush as possible to the end. That way you get to keep as much silver as possible. Now since we're right there, let's just give this a bit of a bend. That's why I keep it nice and neat so it's easy to clean up. Boom. There we have it. Let's go take that to the grinder. Okay, it's time to grind down the back. Just those small little bits of the backs of the leads there. 
Put some on there and then shine it up.
now it's time for the rouge. Now all we have to do is clean off the polish. Now we're just applying a little bit of whatever generic polish you get at the grocery store or whatever. Just to loosen off and free off all the polish that's stuck in the cracks and crevices. This really helps get it out. Don't want to apply press too hard down. All you're trying to do is I find speeds better than power, if that makes sense. Gotta get right in between those teeth there. You can see how it's really polishing up. Nice like a mirror. Just what we're going for. And we don't want to do this too much. We're not trying to ruin what we've already done with the other polish. <laughs> so now we just give it a nice I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go wash it. Just throw it in under the tap for a minute. Wipe it clean as soon as possible. And I'll be right back and show you what, how it looks. And there we go, there we have it. This is our finished product. Pretty nice little blemish on the tooth on the middle right there, but other than that, it, I think it's pretty nice. Got a little checker pattern on the back, but kind of anticipating that. I really like it though. Boom, there we go. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. <clears throat> Please join the Beaver Dam fam. Like and subscribe with all notifications on. Stay positive. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.